Happy Halloween again, crafty friends. I am coming to you with another one of my Tim Holtz Sizzix Halloween release uh, projects that I made. And this one is using the really fun costume party dies. I thought these little guys were so, so cute. And so I wanted something really special to kind of showcase them. And when I started kind of looking through thinking, well, how can I showcase them the best? What I came up with was these adorable number eight tombstone, etc. tags from Tim and Stampers Anonymous. Um, unfortunately, I have looked everywhere for the extra one of these that I have and I can't find it. So I'm going to show you a different size just to give you an idea of what they look like when you're ordering them. Because, of course, we ordered the etc. tags. You can order those and the number eight tags you get, uh, I think, five in a pack. And they look like this. And they're, it's a thick board. It's really nice and thick. Well, they also made for Halloween that you can get in different sizes. So these are the same tag, but they have these Halloween overlays to make them a tombstone. So cute, right? So here is one of the, let's see, I think this is maybe the medium tag. And, oh, it's a small. It's the small thick board tag with the tombstone overlay. And so this one, as you can see, they cut out the parts. And so this is the shape of the top of the tombstone. And then it has the raised area that goes on top of it. And then it has the base, which comes in two parts. As you can see, it's got two parts. So it's got the big part and then this would go across the base. And that's the same here. So if you look at it, let me pick one that I can, that other one's kind of heavy. Okay. So this one comes with this piece that has the cross and it has the shape. And then you have the piece that has this little edging. And then you have the wide base and then the smaller base that comes on top. Okay. Now, when I punched this center piece out so that you could have that kind of raised area, I saved that piece and I used it on the back, okay? So don't throw that away either. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so that's what I used for the main portion of each of these. Then, if you'll look, I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. I attached each of them to a small vignette box. I have lots of these little small vignette boxes left over from my sets of four because for some reason I use the big one and I use the uh, second to largest one, but I have a lot of these and the second to smallest one, the one that's just a little bit bigger than this. I have quite a few of those left over. So you could either, this piece fits, but also the other size fits. You just have to put it the long way against the back of the tombstone. All right, and so then, as you can see, it just makes this little treat holder for you. So what I did for each one is I used a different inlay on the tombstone. For the mummy, I used another one of my favorites that I absolutely love. I used the brick texture fade, okay? So, so wonderful. So I just used that with some paper. I adhered it to the tombstone and then I painted everything. And then I used texture paste, the grit paste, translucent grit paste. And I put that all along everywhere, let it dry, put it all over, let it dry. And then I went over everything with distressed crayons to make it look like moss and just old crumbly bits of the tombstone. You would be amazed at how much detail just rubbing some of that crayon onto those raised pieces, what that does. It's really, really, truly amazing. So that's how I made the base of this. We'll talk about the mummy in a minute and the snacks. Then I used the same translucent grit paste on Mario's treat box. So you can kind of see that there as well. And you can see that depending on how smooth you use it, if you use a, uh, a palette knife, 
that it's going to go on and look a little more like stonework, whereas this one looks a little bit more like moss because I used my finger and I really, you know, made it rough. So you can make it look two completely different ways. All right, depending on how you use it. Now, if you look in the background of the one that I made for Mario, you can see that it kind of looks like a metal door there. And even the bat and the inlay here all look a little bit like metal doors. And that's because, as you know, Tim and Sizzix released these mini texture fades where they took the actual texture fade that was this size and they just shrunk it down and the detail is incredible. So I used that to make the background here. And then I used also, I used the texture fades to make little bands for the treats. So I did it in the, the paper and I used enough paper so that I could put it on these. And also, so I would have enough to make the uh, wraparounds. So, you know, make sure that when you're doing it, that you make enough for both. For Tim's Frankenstein, you can see in here that there are some gears. And so he's a little bit of a steampunk, maybe Frankenstein. And I used that mini mechanical um, texture fade for that one. And again, the same thing, I made enough to make a band, a belly band for my treats. All right, so you wanna make sure that you make enough for both. I did the backgrounds in paper. I adhered it to the front of each of the tags. Once I had assembled the tags, uh, the tombstone tags, then I went ahead and I adhered the paper. And before I adhered the front of the tombstones, I went ahead and I marked some, the I drew around uh, the inside and cut that out so that it would fit down into that raised area. I then cut a bat out of the same texture to put on there. Now you can use what you have. A lot of people purchased this bat crazy die um, last year, year before, um, with all the wonderful different sizes of bats. And so you can see that that bat will fit perfectly in there. But if you didn't, never fear, this bat from the pumpkins, if you get the pumpkins this year, this bat will also fit perfectly there. And in fact, I used it on the back here so that you could see how well it fits within there. All right. So whatever bat you have, if you want to even not, if, you know, if you use a bat or don't, whatever, it's fine. But that's what I did just for a little bit of um, texture. Added that in there and then let it dry and let the crayons do the work. Now, one other thing I want to point out to you is that if you look at Tim's, you're going to notice that his texture paste is also very rough like this one, but do you notice all the little dark flecks that are in it? If you look carefully, you're going to see all kinds of little dark flecks that are in there, and that's because for this one, I used the brand new Distress Grip Paste in Crypt from Tim and Ranger. Oh, I love this stuff. Look at this. It has all those wonderful little black flecks in there and it is that amazing color. So you hardly even have to use Distress Crayon on here because it's already such a perfect color. I have a little glitter there. Um, it's already such a perfect color. Now, what else did I do? Well, I, I cut out my little folks from some papers that I had colored and um, added a few others so that I had enough. And then my names are cut from the new Varsity Alpha. Um, I thought that this could be kind of a dark treat. And if I were giving these, because these little guys are so much fun, and I thought if I was giving this to a kid, I might not want it to be too dark and too scary uh, looking. And so even though I went all out on the textures, uh, on the, the treat boxes and things like that. I thought, you know, I'm going to lighten it up with the fun font and these absolutely del delightful fun characters from Costume Party. 
All right, and then uh, I thought I would also lighten it up with the little snacks. So each snack has a belly band around the candy. And then I used the new, that uh, shift lit. And with this one, I used the pink edge die so that it, I, I thought the pink edge kind of went well with uh, Halloween. And the font that I used on here is of course the tiny type and I use the lowercase tiny type okay and last but not least I use that little tiny bat from the pumpkins just in the center and I kept them fairly uniform when I did this so they each have a belly band and they each have the same alphabet in lowercase and they they all kind of go around and they all have the little <clears throat> uh, bat in there. And then for the last one, you can you see I used the brickwork again and I used these mummy parts. And I also had fun with the different treats because that kind of adds to the feel of your, your treats as well. So the vampire things I have, of course, um, my favorite, and uh, I think it's one of Tim's favorites too, is the candy corn in there. And, you know, really, those of you that are candy corn haters, I understand, but uh, maybe you haven't had the Brock's. Brock's is really the only candy corn out there, in my opinion. But I understand, you know, this is a divisive treat. Um, this is probably another divisive treat. These are uh, marshmallow eyeballs with like a strawberry jelly inside. <laughs> and um, these, for whatever reason, are a big hit with the trick-or-treaters that come to our house. They really love these eyeballs. So the Frank and I's uh, are on there and that's kind of lighthearted. And then these mummy parts are kind of gummy mummy parts. Um, and I call them gummy mummy parts. They've got brains, they've got fingers, um, they've got bones. They've got eyeballs uh, and all kinds of gummy mummy parts. But these were actually, I think, zombie gummies. Uh, and I just named them mummy parts because it went with my whole theme. And so, you know, you can take something that isn't necessarily uh, go with your theme and change it. You know, who knows? Who, no, nobody would know these were zombie parts if you didn't tell them because you're calling them mummy parts. So it works that way, too. All right, so there are my fun little um, costume party treats. I hope that inspires you. And maybe you saw something in this video that you didn't know about or realize before or, uh, you know, uh, something like that. So anyway, thank you so much for sticking with me through this. Thank you very much for watching the video all the way to the end. I so appreciate you and all of your support for me. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me through uh, the, there's a little um, place on my blog at the side, on the right side, and you can contact me that way. And I look forward to hearing from you. So thanks again and happy Halloween.